Morning. How is everyone? <clears throat> Just a tough crowd, huh? First question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's for Ayer, uh, the best centre back in uh, the Scottish league, and always a constant, uh, constant performer in the, the national team and for club. Are you confident your two lads up front can break him down today? Uh, I mean, Christopher Ayer, he's a great player. Uh, I'm not sure he's the best uh, centre back in in Scotland. I think. Um, that's a bit of a silly statement, um, but look, uh, he's decent. But look, is is he better than John Egan, Shane Duffy, or Shane, Seamus Coleman, Kieran Clark? I don't think so. You know, uh, I'm confident in our players, and I'm confident uh, in what we can do. So yeah, I've I've I've, uh, I've no concerns about Ayer or, uh, or, or or what he's doing. You know, his job will be to to stop our players, and as I said before uh, in previous press conferences. We focus on ourselves. So yeah, um, to answer your question, we're not that bothered by him. Um, but yeah, we'll be looking to get past him and uh, get the result today. Okay. And given the chance at Celtic, uh, Elian Lucy, lightning pace, and he's always great for adding width to the attack. Are your lads well prepared to deal with him today? Yeah, we're well prepared. We, I mean, we got James McLean coming in at left wing back there, and you know. Um, we're not we're not worried about pace. Um, we've got great players there, you know. Um, James McLean, he, he's just been nominated for a Championship Player of the Month there recently. So, yeah, I don't see any reason why we should fear Elianusi. Um, you know, James McLean's twice the player he'll ever be. So, yeah, it's not really something that we're that worried about. I mean, um, we'll be we'll be sending James McLean out there, you know, to to probably break his leg early on. So yeah, we're just gonna see how things go uh, in that regard. But yeah, we're not really, not really that worried now. Okay, thank you. And just to let you know, the match is on tomorrow, not today. So just uh, just do your homework in future, okay? I promise when you came on the last day, Paul, uh, do you reckon you'll have a look in tomorrow? Uh, Alan Brown will most definitely be involved um, tomorrow. I'm not gonna give away too much, but yeah, he'll definitely be involved. And uh, Alan's a key part of the squad. And he adds, you know, so much to the squad in terms of his ability, his engine, you know, his getting into the box, his goal scorer and his shooting from range, you know, and his, his passing ability as well, you know. He's, um, he reminds me a bit of Paul Scholes in that department uh, with his passing and, uh, and his shooting. We're absolutely world class, yeah. You feel there's going to be more added pressure on you for this game after obviously beating England? in their own backyard, making you favourites for this game. Do you think that's something that the players are going to relish? Um, our players relish every challenge that, that's put in front of them, to be fair to them. And, you know, um, we thrive under pressure. It's not something that we... we uh, it's not something we're really thinking about. We're just going out there concentrating on getting the results and, you know, blowing Norway out of the park because we feel like we're twice the team that they are and, and we just feel like we're, we're on a better level than they are. And, we just feel like we're the stronger team here and we should be able to go there and get a result. We're, we're, we're fairly confident in getting results. As I, as I mentioned, some of the players in the squad, you know, they're right up there with the likes of Hazard and and, and, and Pogba, uh, the Pogbas of this world. You know, we've got outstanding talent in our squad. So we, we, we showed that when we beat England. So, you know, why, why should we be fearful of Norway? I mean, what have Norway ever really brought to the table in terms of competitions and stuff like that? So, yeah, to answer your question, we're, we're not faced by Norway at all. How was the preparation gone for this game? Obviously, with the England game, you've had a couple of months to prepare for that game since the draws we made. Turn around now quicker for this game, a short days to prepare for this one in terms of trying to get recovery in and then obviously still trying to get stuff done on the training ground. Well, we would have prepared for, for, for all three teams in our group once we got the the draw, once we knew who we were playing. So we've had our analysts look at what, what they're good at um, and we've also looked at what they're bad at and we look to exploit their weaknesses. And, you know, that's a, look, we're regarding the recovery. I mean, Gary Spain's done a phenomenal job with the squad. You know, he has them all in tip-top condition. There's a couple of players going to sit out this one just in regards to tiredness and we've got to do a bit of squad rotation just to keep everything tip, tipping over and just to keep uh, everyone fit um that may be tired but just, no one's carrying knocks to just uh, it's just a little bit of fatigue so we're going into this norway game um fairly confident and yeah the preparation's gone fantastic you know i i feel like this this squad of players you know phenomenal absolutely phenomenal really happy with them
the Norwegian manager has stated your style of play is quite boring. How do you react to this? Um, well, how I react to this is uh, I don't even know who the Norwegian manager is, so maybe he should shut his mouth and focus on his own team because, um, you know, they've beaten Turkey and, and they think because they're top of the group now that our style of play is boring. I mean, what what, what Norway ever shown? You know, when was the last time they were in a meaningful tournament? When was the last time they qualified for anything? Um, really not bothered by, by what the, the Norwegian manager has to say about me, my tactics, my team. You know, I, I've shown so far with that win over England in my only ever game as my Ireland manager that I'm, I'm right up there with the best, you know, the Pep Guardiola's, the Jurgen Klopp's, you know, I'm right up there, I'm right up there in that bracket. So the Norwegian manager could say what he likes, I'm not faced by it. It was his words, not mine. Also. What makes you think that your team is good enough to beat the Norwegians? Well, we've just beaten England. We just beat England in Wembley. We beat them two one. So, you know, we can beat if we can beat England. We will have no problem with Norway. As I said, as I said to you in the, in the last question, what what when has Norway qualified for anything? What's their style of play? I I struggle to to put down. You know, they don't play attractive football, they don't play, um, you know, world-class football like us with this, you know, pass, move, pass, move, uh, ball over the top and goal type of football that we play, you know, what, look, we don't need to focus on them, you know, winners focus on winning and losers focus on winners, so, does that answer your question? Well, personally, uh, Norway, uh, a football team, we have a... Uh football player competing on an European level whereas Shane Long, Shane Duffy they are not competing on the same level as our players. Well I think that's a very silly statement to make I mean look at most of our players are playing in the Premier League which is regarded as the best league in the world at the moment so uh so your, your, your argument has no substance. We've players playing in the Premier League who are Ballon d'Or worthy um, nominees, players like Jeff Hendrick, um, Conor Howrahan, Robbie Brady, these types of players, you know, who can, who can change a game in an instant. They're absolutely top draw players. And to, for you to tell me that no, Norwegian players are better than them, who let this clown in here? You? What? what? I don't think you should really let him back in. A Norwegian journalist has said that Jeff Hendrik wouldn't lace Odegaard's boots. What do you have to say about this? Well, I think that Norwegian journalist really needs to, you know, screw his head on properly. I mean, he hasn't got a clue. Uh, Jeff Hendrik so far has shown in, in the one game he's played in this Euros how good he is. I, I've, you know, I think the best is yet to come from Jeff. You know, he's still relatively young for a player playing in the Premier League. He's got all, all the essential tools to go on to be one of the best ever players to ever play for Ireland. Um, one of the best midfielders of all time for Ireland. So Martin Odegaard, I mean, he went to Real Madrid and his career has gone downhill since. You know, he was tipped to be this wonder boy, but like, you know, he's no Connor Salmon, you know, so... He can he can try and be the wonder kid all he wants, but as I said, he'll never be a Connor Salmon. So let him let that journalist think what he wants, and uh, we'll as I said, we'll focus on us. You know, I feel there is more of a chance that Josh King will win the Ballon d'Or over the likes of Jeff Hendrick. Jeff Hendrick, he does not possess the quality of players such as Joshua King or Martin Odegaard. Seriously, is this, is this, is this a serious... Who let you in here? Who? I think that's absolutely nonsense. Look at the wonder goal he scored against Gibraltar in qualifying. Um, Josh King, he plays for Bournemouth. You know, Jeff Hendrick plays for Burnley who are, who are currently winning the Premier League. So. We don't need to we don't need to compare. 
we know that Jeff is is twice, maybe three times the player that Josh King will ever be. And as regards Martin Odegaard, I told you already, his career is down the washer already. Um, he's a numpty. He's 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 done nothing with his career. You know, Jeff, as I said, he's about to win the Premier League with Burnley. I mean, what more does he need to do? You know, he's definitely going to be up there with the top names for Ballon d'Or next year. You know, I think he he's certainly ahead of uh, Virgil van Dijk in, in the reckoning for that as well. So, you know, to be comparing players is, is absolute nonsense. I mean, who let you in? I, I, I you know, we're going to have to maybe put a ban on you because I, I think some of the stuff you're saying is absolute nonsense, to be fair. And I, I, I've had enough here. I, I don't feel like I have to justify it any further. Look, I'm out, lads. <laughs> We'll see us tomorrow. Look at that f***ing idiot in here. F***ing moron. Yeah, you. Get the f*** out.